All right, guys, who is ready for a verse spicy video talking about the worst makeup of 2021? I'm putting it all over my face, but I am actually going to try to get a good look out of it, you know? But um, yeah, for today's video, we are going to be doing a full face of the worst makeup of 2021. There's nothing more pleasurable than putting my least favorite makeup on my face, <laughs> but actually trying to make it work. And I still think we'll be able to pull through with a good look. I really, really do. Anyways, more important, really excited because today's video is in collaboration with the one, the only, the ever so colorful Angelica Nyquist. Gosh, I'm obsessed with how comfortable she is with color. If you think my makeup looks are boring, you need to check out Angelica's channel because she is all about the colorful makeup. In fact, she doesn't like neutral makeup. She doesn't love the neutral palettes. She's all about the color, which I so very love. She inspires me so much with her looks. She covers a very wide array of makeup brands. She does a lot of indie brand stuff, but then, you know, she also loves herself some Natasha Denona which I know you guys do as well. But anyways, she is just a bubble of energy and colorfulness. So <laughs> I know you guys will love her channel and I'm really excited to see her video because I know she's about to be cutthroat with this. Her video is gonna be so entertaining. So thank you, Angelica, for collaborating with me on this. I can't believe we haven't collabed at this point before I've been watching her channel for years. Make sure you go check out her channel. I will also have her Instagram linked in the description box as well with her video and if you're from Angelica's channel hello I'm slightly more boring with my makeup but <laughs> it's gonna be a good time regardless let's get into it okay so the worst primer listen you guys I pride myself on being able to make products work I really really do so I think we'll be okay so for primer I'm starting off with the Dior skin veil primer and I suppose it's not that this is bad it's just it doesn't really do anything and do you know how expensive this was i realized i paid a lot of money for a layer of nothing on my face like this is just an extra layer on my face i suppose it does have spf like a little bit right spf 20 but it Oh, no, no, this was the biggest waste of money. It just makes me sad because I love Dior complexion products so much, and I just don't recommend this because I I can't figure out exactly what this does to enhance my routine because it doesn't. And I didn't try a lot of bad primers this year. That's why this is probably the worst because I didn't try a primer this year that made my makeup worse, but I, I tried a few primers that did app absolutely nothing and this is the most expensive one that I paid for to do nothing so yeah I suppose there's a little layer of hydration but I feel like I should have gotten with a moisturizer first anyways waste of money let's talk the worst foundation for me this foundation I felt like every time I wore this my skin just looked awful this is the Huda Beauty luminous matte liquid foundation it always looks super thick and heavy on my skin and it gets even worse as the day goes on it looks really really heavy I don't know and drying I just I cannot stay on this foundation one thing I will give a little credit to it is that it it looks better on camera. It's not a terrible camera foundation, but I don't want my makeup to just look good on camera, you know? Whenever I wear this foundation and I go downstairs, my mom is like, what foundation are you wearing? It's always this one. If I apply a thinner layer of this, I can totally get away with it, but I don't want to have to hold myself back. You know, this is just not a good foundation. I also don't see the luminosity in it that it claims to have. It looks quite dry on my skin and it doesn't wear pretty. It doesn't look pretty. It's my least favorite foundation that I tried this year and I've tried some pretty not good foundations this year. If you haven't checked it out yet, I did already post my worst makeup of 2021 video which I am grabbing the products from those videos in this application today and you know I talked about the NARS, what is it? So 
soft matte complete foundation. Honestly, now that I'm looking at it, this is just as bad as the Huda Beauty. The both of these are the two worst foundations that I tried. I talked about the Huda Beauty Glowish. I talked about the Morphe foundation, but this is also like $10, so I'm not that mad at it. Yeah, anyways, this Huda Beauty foundation looks terrible. I'm going to clown myself and put on an extra layer just because I need the cover, just because for some reason I, I have acne, because I do have some acne scarring and a couple spots that are thinking about wanting to come through. But anyways, when I apply that second layer is when I get into trouble. And you know what? I don't have perfect skin, so I do need to apply the second layer, which leads me into this situation where I just hate this foundation. It's not gonna look bad on camera though. It's just in person. I'm gonna look in the mirror and see all of my pores. <sighs> Not a good foundation, mm -mm. don't like it. And I've tried this foundation a ton before fully deciding how much I disliked it, but I noticed every time I used it, I just didn't like the way I looked and it was because of this product. Okay, worst eyebrow product. I tried two pencils this year from Maybelline that were just terrible. Most recently, it's been this Express Brow from Maybelline. Talk about gimmicky, first of all, but the pencil is like, okay, but it's a little too creamy. My eyebrows, I don't love the look whenever I have it, but the weird gimmicky part is you twist it off and it's like there's powder in the cap or something. It's, it's dumb. It takes me like 20 years to get my brows done when I use this product. Product. So let me brush my brows up. I'm annoyed that there can't be a spoolie on this because of this useless powder product, which you can see doesn't hardly apply powder. Like, what is this doing? It made my eyebrows a little darker. I'd rather just have an eyebrow powder and a brush so that I can actually get some sort of definition in the eyebrows. And I just don't see the point. You don't see how much product is in. This is dumb. Like, I'm sorry, it's dumb. The pencil, it's too creamy. I can't get any sort of precision with it. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking because I do need to concentrate because despite me making fun of all of this makeup, I want it to look good. Cause I'm trying to film a couple videos after this. <sighs> So side note, because I do have to mention this when I film a negative video, if you like any of these products, I'm so happy for you. That's great that it worked out for you. You didn't waste your money. Different strokes for different folks, you know? Everything works different for everybody. I'm sure there's plenty of things that I like that you don't like, so. This is all in good fun. If you think I'm being extra mean for no reason, like there really is no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I just think I'm funny when I'm not. It ain't that serious, it's just makeup. Honestly, the eyebrows ain't looking bad. This is the best my eyebrows I've ever looked with this product, but uh, I still am not really a fan. So ignore the fact while I'm putting on an eyebrow gel that I do really enjoy, but we gotta save this shape a little bit. I'm totally cheating right now. There wasn't an eyebrow gel that I tried this year that I didn't like or that didn't stroke any emotion of anger or disappointment from me. So I just gotta go in with something that I like to do this. Dang, I need to trim my eyebrows, but we'll let it go, we'll let it go. There were some concealers that I tried that weren't my favorite this year, but I didn't find a terrible concealer. So I'm just gonna go in with the Ilia True Skin Concealer. To be honest, I can't even remember if I like this or not, so that's why I'm using it. I feel like I didn't like it, but I could be wrong. Wow, this is like just a little bit too dark, but that's fine. Did I like you? I don't know. I know in my worst of 2021 so far, which I did halfway through the year, I did not like the Marc Jacobs concealer, but Marc Jacobs doesn't exist anymore, kind of, sort of, for the beauty line. I hated their concealer that they came out with this year, but I decluttered it, but that would have gone in its place if you know what I'm talking about. Um, I do think I like this concealer though. Oh, this is starting off very, very bad. Ignore that. Okay. <laughs> I liked that, but whatever. Let's move on to powders because I definitely do have two powders that were terrible. So the first one here is the Beauty Blender Soft Focus Gemstone Setting Powder. This has the oddest, let me grab one of my bling brushes, the oddest sheen to it that I don't understand. That, ugh, you can see it emphasizes my pores and it looks like a wannabe highlighter. It just should not be a setting powder and the shimmer in it is 
highly, highly not flattering. Oh my gosh, I can see all of my pores now because of the sheen in it. They wanted to create a powder with a little bit of sheen because that was very trendy, whatever, but the sheen does not look cute. Like you can see little flecks of glitter and it shows every fine line. It's just, it's not good. I feel like I like this powder as a super natural highlight, but to set the powder, which is what it is intended to be used for, it's super terrible. Like my complexion right now looks heavy and um, very porous. But let's dry out my face a little bit more. I do want to add an extra layer of setting. So I'm gonna be going into the Tatcha the Silk Powder. Now I don't know that this is the worst powder, but I can tell you it certainly is the most disappointing powder of 2021. This makes my under eyes look super duper dry, especially as the day goes on. And what's mostly disappointing about it is that Tatcha is such a good brand. Their skincare is amazing, their primer is amazing, but this powder is super duper drying and it just doesn't look pretty on this skin at all. Right now everything looks fine because we're in the early stages, but it does not. No, it's just not. Mm, okay, anyways. <laughs> Oy vey. Okay, so for bronzer, this is partially my fault, but I'm just gonna talk about this formulation in general. The Chanel Balm Essentials. I picked up two this year and was extremely disappointed both times. So earlier in the year, I picked up the shade Golden Light. And if you're familiar at all with Chanel, you know they are like extremely pricey. Okay, the word balm is in the name. Like I know it's gonna be like a balm, but it's not good. It's just, what's the point? So I wanted to use this as a bronzer. I quickly saw that I didn't have the right formulation in mind. That's fine, my mistake. They fooled me once. So then I thought, okay, let me try it in a blush shade just to see, I don't know. So I picked up Printanye in another collection and I just came to the conclusion that I don't care if this formula has the name balm in it. The, you saw this Printanye color? You see how colorful it should look? It's clear. And it annoys me that there are multiple shades in multiple collections of this formula. Would you only need one if you like this formulation? Otherwise, I feel like they're just taking your money. Let me put this on my lips. Hydrate it. Anyways, don't buy these formulas. These were a huge disappointment for me this year and I just don't know why they keep continuing to produce this product because quite frankly they only need one literally what anyways i'm gonna use this to bronze even though technically this is not what it's supposed to be used for i'll put a powder bronzer on top but i just really do not like this product and i also don't like the fact that it has that balmy finish to it as the bronzer but again that is more so my bad i wasn't familiar with the formula i didn't know that it really was like a balm i thought i could make it work for a bronzer but anyways this formula in general i just truly don't understand it okay i don't and before i get into the powder portion even though i already powdered my face i didn't even think about it let's talk about these ilia multi sticks so these are basically the same problem that I have with the Chanel. They just cost less, but you're supposed to put these everywhere. Eyes, lips, face, honey. So I picked up two shades. All of me is this. It's a little bit more color than the Chanel, I suppose, but it's the same situation where it's just like, why? Why do you have multiple shades like these? This next one is Tenderly. Like, what's the point? This is only gonna work on somebody extremely fair. On the lips, it doesn't even look that flattering. Like, you can see it's sticking to all of my dry skin. These are more lip balms than they are for the cheek. For the sake of this video, let's apply some of all of me, just so you can see. Like, it's not giving me much of anything, right? I suppose you can see a little bit. And not only does it barely show up, but it certainly finds its way of messing up what's underneath. Now I am aware I've forgotten I set my face, so that's part of it, but they didn't act very nice when I used this without powder. And nonetheless, this is a high-end product. Most high-end products should be able to handle a little bit of powder underneath, you know? And it just doesn't look good. It really disrupted. Anyways, I do not like this product from Ilia. Ilia has some beautiful products in their line and they have some other cheek multifunctioning products that I prefer over this but these multi-use sticks I feel very similar to the Chanel honestly these are better than the Chanel I'll give them that but they're still just like 
They're not good. <laughs> Anyways, let's set with a little bit of powder. I wanted to pull out the NARS Pleasure Trip palette. I mean, I suppose it's not bad. It probably doesn't deserve to be a main feature on the worst makeup of 2021, but NARS had some hits this year, but they certainly had some misses. This is the most boring palette from NARS ever. I suppose it's not bad. It doesn't deserve to be featured in this video, but I did want to put a bronzer powder over top and honestly I tried a lot of really bomb bronzers this year so I didn't have one so I pulled this out but this palette is so boring super disappointing made me kind of sad that Norris came out with it when I did the review like I liked it like the quality is just fine but Norris so boring huh? why does my bronzer look so pink today Anyways, let's move on to blush. Definitely wanted to pull out this friend over here, which is from Dior. This is from their Atelier of Dreams collection. So this is a newer blush. This is the worst blush I've ever tried from Dior, and it's extra disappointing because Dior is my all-time favorite brand when it comes to blushes. Dior did no wrong with blushes until this came into the picture. It's in the shade Hologram, right? Okay, I mean, that's a little indicative of why I don't like it, but do you see how glittery this is? Dior has never put so much glitter in a blush, and do you see how lack of pigment there is? So you're literally just putting straight glitter on your face. So the first time that I reviewed this, I put it on my cheek. I hated it. I went out for a walk with my husband and my husband literally laughed at me and said, you're glittery. I do not want to put pure glitter on my cheeks. Look, ugh. I don't know. It's just not flattering. It's not the Dior blush formula that I know and love. You know, I'm 25 now. I'm still young, but I just feel like once I graduated college, I just can't get away with stuff like this anymore. So super disappointing blush, like just terrible. <laughs> Okay. Let's keep it moving to highlight. Um, okay. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know, should I talk about this? We'll talk about it. So this is from Fenty. This is the Diamonds Bomb Triple Drip All Over Diamond Veil Palette. This formula, you either love it or you hate it. So if you love it, I actually think you would like this. I don't love this formula. Anyways, you're supposed to be able to put this wherever, but I just don't like this formula. I'm gonna mix these two. It's like a putty formula formula and it's very glittery so let's just add some more glitter to my face shall we it's not going to make too much of a difference not too much picks up on a brush quite honestly i do like this as like a body powder but <laughs> let's go into another highlight just to kind of give us a more concrete highlight which is from the huda beauty light glow obsessions this isn't bad, but for Huda Beauty, their caliber of makeup, this is not a good highlight. And I feel like nowadays it is not hard to create a good highlight. There are very few highlights that I don't like and I've used it recently, like it's fine, but it really is not like the other highlighters on the market. This is just way below them. It does the job, but I feel like it emphasizes the texture on my skin. There's something that's just not smooth about it. It looks a little chunky on the skin. Anyways, I mean, it's doing its job just fine, but when I look, into a mirror. This just doesn't look as smooth. It looks a little bit drier on my cheek. And I, knowing Huda and the type of makeup that they produce, I don't get why they can't get a good highlight formula down and the, why they couldn't put a good highlight formula in this because it's just not good. It's just, it's, just, it's, it's like drying on the cheek. Anyways, not me sitting here getting mad about makeup. <laughs> Y'all ready for the eyes now? Let's start off with eye primer. I'm sorry, but I had to talk about the Makeup by Mario Master Eye Preppin set. This is so dry on my eyes. I have to tug and tug. I suppose the product itself isn't bad, but the amount of hard rubbing I have to do to get this to warm up a little bit and the amount of tugging I have to do on my eye to get this to work, it's quite frustrating. I mean, I'm not a regular eye primer user. I'm lazy. I just use concealer and call it a day. I can't stand this. 
it's just so rough on the eye. Like I said, longevity wise, I haven't noticed an issue with it. I'm not saying the performance it's bad, but the application on this, it's terrible. I also bought the wrong color, but that's on me. Okay, let me use a sponge so I don't have to tug on my eyes so much. It's just really hard to work out and your eye area is so delicate. You don't want to be tugging on your eyes. I'm gonna use the translucent powder. I love the idea of this, but I wish you could put something over top of the creams to kind of seal it a little bit more so that the creams stay creamy for more than a week of owning it. I don't know, a lot of people like this product though, but I just can't stand pulling on my eye area like that. Eyeshadows, I'm telling you right now, the worst eyeshadow palette of 2021 was easily Naked Pink by Tom Ford, but I've talked about it so much recently and used it to prove how bad it is that I'm not going to use it again because you guys have seen my spiel on this. So all I'm gonna do is swatch it on my finger. I just swatched really hard and just wipe off what I have. This palette was $90. This is just unacceptable, right? Unacceptable. So I'm not gonna use it in today's video, but this wins the absolute worst place. The kind of product that I want to feature, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm gonna get verbally attacked. The <laughs> Danessa Myricks Chroma Flakes in the shade Moonlight. I can't speak for the other shades because people have been loving this, but I need to show you what this does. So let me look at my pile of the worst eyeshadow palettes to try and come up with a look that's going to do it justice. I wanted to use a cyber palette, which is terrible, which by the way, I do have or will have the worst eyeshadow palettes of 2021. So that's where I'm pulling these palettes from. So keep an eye out for that if it's not already up, but I need like a matte blue. So let me look at that pile again. I didn't pull the right ones. Okay, I'm gonna pull the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. I mean, quality wise, it's not the worst palette of 2021, but this is in my video and I will explain further why this palette is one of the worst palettes of 2021 but a majority of it comes down to knowing what Natasha does best and being so familiar with her brand to what she gave us with this which a lot of it has to do with the color story but anyways I just want to lay down a base for this so let me use some of mantra putting that in the outer corner this is a rougher number 14 brush, by the way, which is an amazing brush, so. And then for a little bit more depth, let's go into Equilibrium. And I'm just going to blend this out here. This palette was disappointing to me for various reasons. It's just an underwhelming palette and I find that the color story doesn't have much cohesion. I think it's a recipe for muddiness. But you can check out my Worst Palettes of 2021 video if you want more info on that. Anyways, you know, if it's a palette you're eyeing, it is a workable palette. These shadows did blend out super duper good. All right, friends, that brings me to this guy. I I have not yet demoed this on my channel, so I don't know if it's just the shade, which is Moonlight, but it frustrates me. To me, what this looks like is a child's gel glitter. Like this looks like some glitter that I played with when I was a kid. There's no base to it, really. It's just about the flakiness. So actually, I'm bringing back the Zendo palette. I'm gonna give it a legitimate chance. I'm gonna take some, a mixture of Flow and Equilibrium. I'm gonna apply them all over my lid so that the Chroma Flake has something to lay on top of because I've never tried it like that and that might save it. Okay, so we have the color on. I'm gonna put it on my finger just a little bit. We'll start off small and I'm going to press this on the eyelid. So when I saw other people using this, people were getting so much color and so much dimension from this. Like why is mine clear with some uneven chunks? Usually when I buy these individual products, I'm so excited for them because they're filled with so much dimension and texture and reflect. It's just not what I was expecting at all and everybody's raving about it and it takes for ever to dry. If you have hooded eyelids, I don't recommend this because it just makes your hooded lids stick together and crease. So the last time that I used this, I had some eyeshadow on underneath and it caused the eyeshadow to crease right away because my eyelids were sticking together. So I'm gonna close my eyes and we're gonna dry it with a fan. Oh, it's cold. 
I'm trying to see if maybe I haven't been giving it enough dry time. But I feel like even when I gave this dry time, it still was sticky feeling. I haven't gone the fan method, so that's what we're doing. But I feel like, can you see? Don't you feel like it kind of picked up the eyeshadow underneath and like mess it up? I don't know. I don't get this product. It's been a few minutes. It's not as sticky anymore, but it's unfortunate that I have to like close my eyes for three minutes and not open them. But it just looks chunky. Doesn't look good. And it like dried hard, so now this eyelid isn't closing all the way. Because normally I have quite hooded eyes and I feel like it, my eyes go over and now it's, it's hard. <laughs> Now I have the opposite problem. I still don't get this product and they made the eyeshadow underneath look uneven to me. So anyways, I don't like this. Let's keep it moving to eyeliners. I'm going to use the Sephora Collection Waterproof Liquid Pencil. This looks good. <clears throat> what? Why didn't I like this? Okay, yeah. It's not black enough. That's what it was. It's in that first run over here, it looked good, but as I'm continuing to use it, it's turning almost gray and it doesn't do well over textured shadows. So if you have like glitter or a really metallic shade underneath, it's not going to cover it very well. I don't know, it's almost too thin of a formula. I can also see it swimming into the lines of my eyes. It's not terrible. It's usable. I didn't throw it away. I don't like it. Let me do the other eye. All right, guys. So it wasn't, it's not that bad. I'm not going to tell you like not to buy it. There's just a lot better eyeliners. I think the times that I've used this when my eyeshadow is more intense, it had some trouble, but it's not like horrific, but let's keep going. I'm going to use this next. This is from REM Beauty. This is the Eye Coal in White, and this is just the stiffest white pencil look how hard and how many times i have to go over to get this to show up like i have to get aggressive to get just a little bit of it i shouldn't have to layer more than twice to get this to show up a good white pencil i should be able to just go boom boom and it's good this look three times and I'm not getting anything. My, If you have sensitive eyes, I mean, this is just miserable to have to do to get it to show up. Anyways, I'll give it this. It lasts a long time, but the trouble to get it on, it's just not good for your eyes. Guys, this Danessa Myricks thing got my eyelids feeling so stiff. <laughs> Okay, so for mascara, there's a few that I had. I'm just going to use my e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara. The more that I've used this, I just hate how big this wand is. And it doesn't do anything for my lashes. Like the big wand, it's worthless. So let me just pop this on. I don't think e.l.f. honestly has very good mascaras. I haven't had the best luck. Like they're Lash It Loud, not my favorite either. It's fine. I'm gonna finish them up but they have yet to come out with a mascara that impresses me like you see this doesn't do much to my lashes it doesn't add volume it doesn't have length it just puts some black stuff on my eyelashes and since i have pretty sparse lashes i like a lot of vavoom and i need a really good mascara these don't do it for me so because i am planning on filming i do want to put on some lashes so that i look better so let me throw some on and then we will be back to finish the lips. Okay, lashes are on. The secret, honestly, to any bad makeup look is with a good pair of lashes. So <laughs> we're presentable for the next video, but let's move on to lips, our final two products. So I want to talk about this liquid lipstick that is like the most drying, uncomfortable line emphasizing liquid lipstick that I've ever tried before. So this is from Makeup Revolution. This is the Matte Balm Liquid Lip. I have mine in the shade New Charm. I decluttered the rest. I like this color. That's my problem. I put up with these liquid lipsticks when I like the color and they smell like buttercream frosting, but uh, look, you can already see it clinging to the dry patches on my lips and how uneven it is. Mm, I probably should put on a lip liner. I was hoping. Anyways, it just clings onto the dry patches and is extremely like uneven. Let me get a lip liner. I can't stand this. <laughs> this is Wingoss Vintage Pink, which I love this lip liner just to save the day. I guess I'm totally cheating on this full face of worse makeup, but we gotta salvage it somehow. And I hate this. The stickiness. Why? Okay, hold on. One last 
layer, and then we'll put on my favorite gloss in the world. Okay, so this is a brand new gloss, and I just don't understand this gloss formula. I feel like it makes whatever lip product I'm wearing underneath disappear in like five minutes. So this is another product from REM Beauty that was just a major miss for me. This is the Plumping Lip Gloss. I like the color of it. The applicator is not my favorite, but I'm talking about the product right now. It makes the lip color disappear. Like it give. let me put it on and then I'll explain. So it's not shiny enough for a lip gloss. Like I don't get too much shine from it. For some reason, there's something weird about this formulation where whatever you're wearing underneath like comes off so much easier and the lip color is not going to last. So I don't understand this gloss formula. Anyways, all things considered though, like the look is not bad. You know, I thought I could pull it off with this makeup, but still let me get myself together and collect my final thoughts with you. Okay, so here's the final look. I mean, it's not my best makeup day. Like kind of taking a step back. My face looks hecka dry, like so dry. My lips look dry, even with the gloss on it. My cheeks are super glittery. My bronzer is too pink, but that's mostly my fault. My eyebrows are a little bit patchy. My eye look is extremely patchy. It I'm not vibing with it, <laughs> but I guess that's the point of doing a full face of the worst makeup of 2021. Again, if these products work for you, I mean, that, like I said, that's great. Everything works differently for everybody. It might be my application. It might be my skin type, all of that good stuff. But, um, yeah. I mean, for the most part, everything disappointed me as I thought it would. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video at the very least. And make sure you check out Angelica's video. I will have it linked down below for you. Go give her a big fat subscribe and press her notification bell. And as you know, we are in the middle of Vlogmas. Make sure you're subscribed to stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Bye guys, I'll see you later.